Christ all for anybody in here this morning. Come on now, talk to me this morning. As Christ earned that place where he's all in all. He's everything to me. Christ is all. Couldn't make it without him. Amen. Both of those songs have special meaning. We thank God for them this morning, by God's grace. I want to thank you for your prayers. Even this morning, Sister Patricia, she just responded so quickly. She ran and grabbed me a whole box of tissues so that I could take care of myself up here. You all didn't even know it. I just want to bless her for that, for blessing her pastor that way, by God's grace. And I want you to know the prayers of the righteous avail as much. Amen? When I stood up here before, I had a mess happening up here. God let me sit there for a few minutes, and I'm kind of clearing up. And so I thank God for small blessings this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Tell somebody to tell them those small blessings mean a lot. Small blessings. Amen. Amen. We've had some testimonies this week. We've had some powerful testimonies this week. This past Wednesday at a prayer service, we had some testimonies that were shared. We came outside, and Sister Richardson, if you don't mind me saying, she told us about how God jumped in and saved her and her family. Somebody got to talk to me this morning. Devil tried to take them out on Interstate 12, just driving down the highway, not bothering anybody. Car came up on the interstate and kept coming. Y'all not to hear it here yeah. this morning kept coming until they knocked them off the road and God said I was already prepared for that. Somebody that hear me this morning already prepared for that. Already made provision, a way of escape for his children so they could be here to say that Christ is all and he's all. He's everything that you need even before you need him. I'm not talking to anybody in here this morning. Oh, I thank God for his goodness and his grace this week. We came out to Bible study on Tuesday evening. Elder asked me to go ahead and lead study while he and his family were making their way back. We got here to the church and my daughter-in-law had sent me a text from Baton Rouge and said, Father-in-law, they have weather coming and it's bad. It's real tough out here this evening. There's hail and there's lightning and there's wind and saints of God, we got in the church on Tuesday evening. God blessed us with enough time to get in the church. Start the study. We had a good time in the Lord. Just spent a few minutes. And no sooner than we got started and got into it and the wind started to blow. Y'all hear me in here. And the rain started to fall and I looked up again and I said, Saints, I don't know if we're going to make it through the whole study. The words were barely out of my mouth and those lights went off in the place. And I'm so thankful for people who know Jesus. Somebody ought to say amen for your own self. I'm thankful for people who know Jesus. Nobody panicked. Nobody jumped up. Everybody just sat there so I kept on teaching the study. Right there in the dark, my phone stayed on, and we kept on teaching, and folks said amen, and we said, we better go home before this rain. Are y'all with me in your saints? We serve a good God. What do you say? Amen. Turn to somebody and tell them, my God can do anything. My God can do anything. But fail, and even when he decides, as we are going through so much bereavement, in our church, that it is time for another saint to rest in his grace. We thank God that he knows even then that we need him. And he's promised us that he won't leave us alone. He would send a comforter to be with us. So for every family, every family whose heart is hurting, whose spirit is grieving this morning, we want you to know God has promised himself in the person of the comforter to be near you, to be with you during this time, to hold you up and to bring you through. I don't know how folk make it who don't know Jesus or profess that there is no Jesus. I don't know how they make it through these different life events. 
storms and tests and challenges without the hope that my Jesus gives. But this morning, I want to tell you, I'm so glad to know him. And I'm so glad that he loves us right back. What do you say? Amen. Amen. I'm not going to keep you long this morning. But we're going to ask God for a word. What do you say? Amen. Bible says in Matthew 24, we're going to try our best to get everything up on the screen for you as best we can. You're going to be patient with this morning. Matthew 24 and verse 14, if you have it, you can turn it, but if not, it's on the screen. The Bible says in this one simple verse, at this gospel, can you preach it with me this morning? And this gospel, this gospel, what gospel, Jesus? This gospel, this gospel of the kingdom. Are y'all with me in here, saints? Not the gospel that tells me that God wants to give me a new car, a new house. This gospel of the kingdom, the Bible says, shall be preached in Come on now, y'all help me preach this thing for just a few minutes this morning. This gospel shall be preached. This gospel of the kingdom, it shall be preached in all of the world for a witness to the fact that Jesus is coming again. I'm going to say it again. Jesus is coming again. I'm going to say it one last time for every person in the room. Jesus is coming this gospel, this gospel must be preached. This gospel must be preached. It is the gospel of the kingdom. What kingdom? The kingdom of Jesus Christ. It must be preached in all of the world for a witness to who, saints of God? Come on, talk to me this morning. Unto all nations. And then the blessing of then shall. Then shall the end come. Are you with me this morning, saints? Y'all forgive me, I have another sermon from our prophecy series. Even so, come on now, y'all preachers in the room with me this morning. Even so, would you pray with me this morning? Father God, we just ask you to spend just another moment or two with us. God, if we can just behold you, you said our lives would be changed as a result. So God, I just ask you to reveal your glory. Lord, you know how many faults and failures I have within my person. God, don't let anybody, anybody see me, Jesus, but may they see you and you alone. May you be glorified, Lord. And then, God, move us, motivate us, God, to tell somebody about a Jesus. Who's coming back to save us all? As I pray this morning, we pray and we ask it in the name of our Jesus. Yeah. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Have you ever been given a task that was too big yeah. for you? Come on now, talk to me this morning. Have you ever been given a task that was too big for you? You tried as best you could by God's grace. You, you did the best you could. You worked on it as hard as you could. But for some reason, that the task was just a little bit bigger than, than maybe your energy, your efforts, your resources allowed you to, 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 to go ahead and, and attack that thing. And you could not. Are you with me in your sense? Y'all are looking at me funny like y'all don't know what I'm talking about this morning. Every now and then you get an assignment that might be just a little bit too large. It might be just a little bit, just a little bit too big. I, I know the Bible says we can do all things. I'm not talking about it in that aspect. I'm talking about if I can only lift 50 pounds. Are you always in your sense? If I can only lift 50, y'all not talking to me. If I can only lift 50 pounds and you put 55, Huh? I'm just trying to talk some plain talk this morning. Are y'all with me? Even so, come Lord Jesus, if you put a task in front of me, that's to me. I can give it my best effort. I can try to lift it all day. But if I can only lift 55 and you put 51, that ought to look me correct now. If I can only lift 50 and you put 51 down there, huh? am I talking to anybody? 50 and a half. Fifty and a quarter, the limit of what I can get done is. So anything beyond that is beyond my ability. Jesus 
says in the text that the gospel has to be preached to every every nation. Are y'all with me here this morning? Come on, we're going to spend just a minute here this morning. The gospel has to be preached to how are we who are living here in him? Y'all not talking to me this morning. How are we supposed to preach the gospel to the folk over there in Japan? Huh? I'm just asking a question this morning. Y'all stay with me. How are we supposed to get the gospel to the people who are living over in Somalia and in Egypt? Y'all not talking to me. Come on, stay with me now. If I can only live 50, 51 is too big. How are we supposed to get the gospel to the people who are, 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 are living in Armenia and, and Russia and all of these different places? But Christ has said the gospel has to be preached unto every nation before Jesus can come again. Are y'all with me in his sense? Is there anybody like me who's ready for Jesus to come? Is there anybody like me who's a little tired? Just trying to get y'all to talk to me this morning. Is there anybody who's a little weary? I told the family at the last funeral I went to, if I have to preach another funeral, it's going to be one too many. I don't want to have to preach another one. Jesus, you can come on and we don't need to have another one before you come. Is there anybody with me? Anybody woke up with some knee pain? Y'all are looking at me kind of funny, I'm telling you. Y'all not talking to me this morning. I had ACL surgery on the right one, tore the left one up, and I couldn't even afford to get surgery on that one. Y'all not here at me. So that one had to do what it did by itself. I don't know what's in there. I don't know what's left, but it still works. So I still you make it somehow. But you don't have to tell me when the rain is coming either. Like my grandmother used to say, "Boy, when you get old, you gonna learn what I'm talking about." She used to say things like, "Oh, I can tell when the weather's about to change. My joints start to feel." I'm not talking to anybody in here. I have to get up and I have to move a little bit. Y'all didn't notice I had to get up this morning just a few minutes ago and stretch the Achilles out a little bit. Before I could come down the stairs, I said, Jesus, you know I need to come on stress. Anybody ready for Jesus to come? My wife and I were at the house the other day. Yeah, man, I'm gonna pick on you a little bit. We were at the house the other day. She pulled something out. We were trying to read it. The print was too small. Y'all uh, not talking to me in here this morning. And she pulled one on me right there. She put her reading glasses on. Y'all not talking to me in here. I'm ready for Jesus to come. That's what I'm trying to say right there. She put her reading glasses on and she was able to read it clear. I was still up there. I remember a time when you could have a sign out before you. I could be standing up here and I could A-E-I-O-N-U. I don't know what happened, but something changed along the way. All I got to say, even so, I will be mad, Lord, if you decide to come back this afternoon. I'm going to walk, and I'm going to go ahead and walk right on into God's glory and say, thank you, Jesus. Text says, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world for a witness unto who, everybody? And then, 
and thin and thin. We have a simple theme this year. Let's come on, man. You preach better than that with me. Let's go fishing. Earlier in the year, I asked, I asked my church family, Saints of God, can we throw the net on the on the other side of the water? Are y'all with me in this thing? Some of y'all were here for that service. Some of y'all heard when I when I asked, can we try to do something different than we've done before? Can we ask God to give us a new experience, a, a, a bigger walk with him, a, a, a new group of people to go and tell the gospel to. And I was so proud. Some of y'all didn't even wait. That day you jumped up and said, God, I'm moving from the left and I'm moving to the God, I want you to do something through me and, and for me that moves me to a greater place with you, a greater relationship, a greater walk with you, God. Throw my neck from the, the right side to the... See if we can catch something. As I drive up and down the streets of Hamlet, Come on, y'all lift your heads up because I want to talk to my family today. As I drive up and down the streets of heaven, it takes me about 15 minutes to drive from my house over to the Walmart on the other side of heaven. It takes me about 15 minutes to get from the airport and to, to drive through heaven and all the way over to the other side past the Walmart over there. It takes me about 15 minutes. I sat there and, and, and I watched the clock one day just so I could get a feel for how long it would take me to get down there. And then and I went down to Ponchatoula and, and, and I drove all the way almost down to the lake. Are y'all with me, Sanders? I went down as far as I dared to go and it, it started looking like maybe they weren't. Well, anyway, amen. And some of you say you better turn around and go back. And, and so I stopped and I turned around and I started driving north and I drove from as far as I could south in Ponchatoula until I got up past the Tobin and I, I kept on going and, and it seemed like, okay, it took me about 15, 20 minutes to get from down there to up there. And I said, God, how in the world can we reach all of these people? It's too big, God. How, how can we make a difference? How, how can we? Come on now, y'all must be in here. How can we reach heaven for you, God? The text says the gospel's got to go to. It's got to get to everybody. And I said, God, I don't think we can handle everybody. That feels too big. I don't know if we can get to, to China and, and Russia and Antarctica. I don't know if we can get to those places. But I think we might be able to get to Pancha too. Come on, I don't look at me funny. I'm just trying to cast my net on the other side. I said, God, I don't know about getting all the way over there to Europe and, and, and Spain and, and France. You have other people for that. But as I was driving through the Tomini, I said, God, I think we can make a little difference here. I think there's enough of us, and I think the gospel that we have, this life-changing gospel, that if one of us, some of us, all of us will catch the vision and say, God, give me somebody for your glory. I think we might make a difference somewhere. I went out by the airport and I, 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 I walked around over there and, and I talked to some of my neighbors and, 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 and they asked me, hey, I, I see you on Saturday. You kind of dressed up on Saturday. Oh, y'all with me, y'all get kind of quiet. Come on, you have to help me with this. We'll all enjoy it better, amen? I see you dressed up on, on every Saturday. It looks like, where you go on Saturdays? I go to church 
on Saturday morning. You don't go to church on Sunday. I said, like, God, look at you, just bust the door wide open for me. Well, let's go ahead and talk then. No, I don't go to church on Sunday. I, I go to church on Saturday. Why do you go to church on Saturday? Don't everybody go to church on Sunday? Well, let's just go ahead and talk about the thing then, why don't we? And so we started having a conversation about God's Sabbath and God's call to do the right thing, to worship Him the way that He, are you with me, are you saying? Uh, we might not be able to get all the way to the other side of the planet, but I say, God, if I can walk out my door, y'all not talking to me, I need you this morning. If I can just walk outside and instead of getting in my car and just driving up, say hey to my neighbor. And asking how he and his family are doing, then maybe somebody might ask the question in the context of the conversation. I know you get dressed. I see you get dressed up on Saturdays. Are, are, are y'all with me in this sense? Somebody might ask the question: Where do you go every Wednesday night at six o'clock? And then you come back around 7.15, 7.30 every Wednesday. Oh, y'all can get me. I'm getting ready to mess with you now. Every Wednesday, you, you leave your house about 5.30. And you go on for about an hour and a half, and then you come back around 7.15, 7.30. I'm going to try it again every Wednesday. I know this. What would you say? Every Wednesday. You stop washing the car, and you stop breaking up leaves around the house. You go ahead and get in your car every Wednesday, I'm talking to somebody in here this morning. And you drive off somewhere. You go for about one hour and 30 minutes. I'm going to try that one more time. Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, you turn your TV on. You don't go shopping at the grocery store. Oh, yeah, your pastor's messing with you right now. Every Wednesday, you set aside one hour and 30 minutes. 15 to get there and 15 to get back home. To go and have prayer with the other saints at church. That God will save all of us. This gospel's got to be preached in all of the kingdom. That's what I'm talking about right here. Every Wednesday, I notice that you go out and you, you go to that place. You might see him a little down when you go out, but every Wednesday, when you come back, you see him a little lifted up. It seemed like in the middle of the week, you would have got something that helped to pick up your spirit and to, to feed your soul just a little bit and to encourage you and to strengthen you just a little bit for the journey until that Saturday. Because I know on Saturday I see you get dressed up. Boy. Every Wednesday we open the doors of our church. We open the word of the Lord. We ask God to speak to our hearts. Every Wednesday, we have testimony period. Every Wednesday, we sing the songs of Zion. Every Wednesday evening, we receive a word from the Lord. This past week, we talked about prophecy, revelation. Come on now, and how revelation is all about Jesus. Come on, if that's the truth, say amen. Y'all don't have to talk to me today. I'm going to talk to you anyway. Because the Bible says that once the gospel is preached in all of the, end, in all of the kingdom, then the end is going to come. The 
this past Wednesday, we had our first night of our prophecy seminar. Amen. All right. This past Wednesday, we had our first night of our prophecy seminar. We're not even having a meeting every night of the week. We only have them on one night. One night. All right. Wednesday night. Ain't that somehow? Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, we have our prophecy seminar. 15 minutes to get here. 15 minutes to get back home. It lasts for one hour. One hour. I'm talking about preparing for this. The end is coming. All right. And the question is, what are you filling up your plate with? God needs you to preach gospel. That's what the text says right there. From the tall building all the way down to Ponchatoula. From the airport all the way to the other side of it. God needs us to preach the gospel. The question is, what are you filling up your plate with? I told somebody one time, I said, Pastor, I don't know why it is I'm having so many struggles in my life. I said, what are you putting in your life? Right. If you put garbage in it, well, y'all don't have to say, man, I'm going to preach you in this tea this morning. If you put garbage in it, then all you have is garbage to pull out of it. Yeah. Amen. If you put some good stuff in there, then you have some good stuff to draw on. By God. Are y'all with me in here today? All right. All right. 15 minutes to get from one side of heaven all the way to the other side. And I said, Lord, I'm going to claim it all for you. Yes. I'm claiming every person who's looking for you, asking about you, wanting to know more about you. I'm claiming them for you this year by God's grace. That's how we came up with this thing. Let's go. Not somebody else. Not somebody else. Come on, y'all wake up. This is a fall asleep service, so you got to fight for it today. Wake up! Amen. Uh, it's not going to be smooth. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be one well, where we're going to jump up and run down the house. This is going to be a tough one right here, but we're going to get through it together by God's grace. I claim every person from the airport all the way to the other side of town from who wants to know about Jesus for this church. Amen. That's it. Amen. Gospel's got to be preached. That's what the text says. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness of all. Then shall the end come. Did you know Revelation was all about Jesus? Some folks study prophecy and they don't know, they don't understand that prophecy was only given for the purpose to point us right back towards Jesus and his plan to save all of us. Come on now, y'all with me in a sense? The only point in studying it is to reaffirm the fact that God is in control of all things, everything, including whether or not Donald Trump gets reelected. That's not even up to us. God is in control of even that. Y'all not talking to me again. What happens at the Lord? God's in control of that. His plan of salvation is unveiling. It's coming clear right before our very eyes. And if you and I don't wake up and say, God, help me not to miss. The signs that have been laid out that somebody else is going to be preaching in your place. This Wednesday at 6 o'clock, guess what's going on? Y'all y'all responded like you're scared to say it. This Wednesday at 6 o'clock, guess what's going on? Our prophecy seminar, I'm not up here just to advertise. I'm trying to tell you that the gospel has to be preached. And now is the time because the end is approaching. Do you know they said that we only have a handful of countries left to get into? But I'm going to say that to you again. There's only a handful. You can count them on one hand. There's only a handful of countries left for missionaries to get into to preach the gospel. 
If the text is true and we believe it, if the text is true, I'm going to say that again. If the text is true and we believe it, then the Jesus we prayed for, we waited for, has to come soon. My question is, are you wearing your jersey with the C on Are, are, are you wearing your jersey? Are you preaching? Are you on the team? Are you on the team out there preaching, teaching, and sharing the good news of the gospel? I tell you, you don't have to get a microphone like me and preach this way. But God's given every one of us a mission and a purpose, and we've all got to preach the gospel in these last days. My question to you is, are you preaching it to your family? What about your neighbor? When was the last time your neighbor asked you where you were going on Wednesday? You shall know the truth, the truth is going to set you free. Amen? Amen. What was the last time they asked? What was the last time you asked them to come with you? Uh, I asked them earlier, part of this year, for us to do something different. To step out and to ask God to give us a new opportunity. I need everybody, y'all come on, wake up, lift your hands up right here, right now. Because the church must be about its mission, otherwise there's no reason for us to be here. Jesus gave us a mission in the Great Commission to go ye therefore and to preach and to teach. Huh? So everybody lift your head up right here, right here, right here. I don't know what your schedule has been on Wednesday. I don't know what your schedule has been on Wednesday. Hey Amen. I'm glad to hear you on Sabbath, a see on Sabbath morning. You need to be here. Sit down at the welcome table and get this meal. Amen? Amen. But for the times in which we are living in right now, the Bible says as we get closer to the Lord's second coming, that we must enter into a time like we have never seen before. How are you going to handle that if a family member turns on you and says things about you, gives you up because you stand for righteousness? And I want to ask you another question. If you're not preparing yourself, not to stand, how are you planning on staying when the fire gets turned up? Oh, y'all not talking to me this morning, so I'm going to try to help here in the front. If you're not prepared right now, how are you going to stay when the fire gets turned up and it gets hotter than it is right now? Some of us, some of us, even right now, if folk ask a little bit too much about your church, you start to get uncomfortable. How come you don't wear jewelry? I'm not picking on anybody if you wear it. Amen. Praise God. I'm not picking on anybody. But you wear yours different than other people do. How come you don't curse and swear? Some of y'all looking at me for her. That's the her talking now. No, I want that, but God wants. This is what we have to work to get through together. Amen? Amen? Come on, stay with me now. Because saints of God, the fire is not even turned up yet. Amen. And if all it takes to get you to go ahead and swing back to the other team is for somebody just to get out of line a little bit, your children to get on your nerves, your husband to act up a little bit, and then you find the old man and the old man comes back to the service again, then how? In the gospel. That's why you're not here on Wednesday night. The fire's not even turned up yet. Our children and our families are looking at us and oh. Amen, huh? Amen. Yeah, you 
said all the right stuff in church, but as soon as we got out in the car, Lord have mercy. Uh, nobody's going to sleep today. We're going to work our way through this one. Doing stuff we know we don't need to. If we prepare now, we're doing these things that so we know we don't need to do. Hear me, saints of God. You, 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 you can't flirt over here with this. All right. All right. And then run back over here and say, Lord, you know my heart, though. <laughs> Oh, you know I'm a grace preacher. That's, that's what I preach. I preach grace. But hear me, at some point, at some point, I'm going to say it again, because I need everybody in here to hear. At some point! God's got to hold us accountable for the things that we already know. Lord, I was struggling. You know, it was just tough. It was hard on me. At some point, you and I are supposed to become overcomers. Amen. Try it again. Have you been wearing your jersey? The, the, the team right there, the gospel team. The gospel team that's preaching this message, that's living this message, that's sharing this message. Have you been wearing that so people can see it? Are you still pulling your side to tell you the dirty jokes? <laughs> somebody's business. I was calling you to ask you to pray for me and you were over here somebody else's stuff. How did this happen? Push everybody right here because we cast down nets on the other side. We're asking God, grow us in you, Jesus, so that we can live for you, Jesus. You've got to go ahead and put that stuff down, and you have to go in and do something different. I was study on Tuesday night. I didn't even throw it out. Folk on the other side of the railroad 
friends. God, you need somebody to go sin. Amen. Task is too big without him. We can't reach even all the folk here in heaven. But you know what? If we have God on our side, and we have the right message. Oh, come on now. I'm almost done right here. If we have God on our side, come on now, talk to me and get that. If we have God on our side, and we preach the right message, what's the right message? Church, you got a big enough church right here already. Amen. And if you drive my, by my house, you'll see we don't live in anything that looks like Joel Osteen's house. Amen. So don't worry, it's not about your past either. You don't have to go ahead and worry about putting more money in because the pastor needs a Rolls Royce or a Mercedes or a bigger house, bigger car. It's all about him. We've got the right message. Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. Amen. Amen. This gospel of the kingdom. What's this gospel? I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I'm going to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Receive you unto myself. That when I am there, you may be. Started this past Wednesday for one hour. All right. One hour. Now, Revelation is all about yeah, Jesus. Right. That folk who scared to open the book of Revelation. God's given us, trusted us with. The truth for the last days, saints of God, and if we don't build ourselves up, how in the world can we preach this gospel so that the end can come? I asked the question earlier. Anybody ready to see Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This verse, <laughs> this verse is a conditional verse. It's a conditional verse. It says the gospel has to be preached. Before the end can come. Amen. Or in other words, one plus one gets you to two. You can't get to two with only one. You need one and the other one in order to get to. Come on, talk to me, church family. Stay up, don't go to sleep. This not a go to sleep one today. All right. This gospel has got to be preached to your neighbors, to the Talbot, to the airport area, down in Ponchatoula. That's our mission field, to preach right here, up and down that street, this street, that street, to tell somebody, Jesus is coming again soon. Which means you have to come and get your own tank filled up before you can give something to somebody else. This Wednesday, prayer meeting, prophecy study, starts at? Uh, will you cash your net to the other side? I know you haven't been here in a while. I know because I come on Wednesday. I know you have not been here in a while. But you know what we come for all this tonight? You know what we take the time and prepare for? The reason we study, the reason we get before God and we ask God, God, give me a word for your people. God, give me something to say so that when somebody leaves this place, they can say, I had an encounter with Jesus today. We spend that time in preparation. I'm going to say it again. We spend that time in preparation so God can work on us first. Get your hammer in and get your nails in. Get the screwdriver. God going to work on us first. Take it on me, God. Work on all of the places. That's out of order. So that when I get to the church and I 
stand before your people. I'll be out of the way and they can only see you. I prayed all week with you in mind. Come on, I want my church man to lift your heads up. I prayed all week with you in mind. This Sabbath, I'm not just standing here with some random thoughts. This comes from time that I've spent with God. And I spent time with him with you in mind. It was for you. God bless your people today. Give them something that they need to hear. And if God has a plate of food out there, steak, potatoes, onions, gravy, how dare we be so busy that we won't even sit down and eat it? I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I'm trying to inspire you by God's grace. Come and get what God has prepared for you. God has prepared this for you. This Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we're taking another step in our prophecy journey. Yes, I hear you. We'll take another step. This past Wednesday, we all fit right here. Come with the first quarter by a row. We didn't leave this up. The gospel of the kingdom. Has to be preaching all the world. Yeah. Amen. Time to come get the gospel as well as being presented. Amen. Amen. Because right. because then when you go out to preach, you have something to preach. Amen. And it says if we all go and preach from the other side of the airport, <laughs> all the way to the other side of Walmart, down to Pontchartula, and all the way up to Natalie. If we all get out there and start preaching, then the end. Is anybody ready to see Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody ready to see Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then just like Jesus, let's be about our Father's business. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. That's all I have today. I am here, my Savior, call me. I have one question for you. I can do Are you ready to catch your head to the other side? My Savior, call That means different habits. That means I have to go home Wednesday, grab something to eat, then run over there to the church. Oh, just come on down to the church. If we have to fix something here, we will. So we can get filled up. So we can go fill up and go preach the gospel to all of the world so that he can come again. Would you pray me, Father God? This wasn't comfortable. This was not easy. But Lord, it's our mission. It's our calling. It's what you have called us for. Every person, every person in this room, God has heard your voice and has answered in some way, in some capacity, God. We've been called to stand for you, to live for you in such a time as this, where God, it seems like the world is literally coming unraveled. You called us to live in this time, God. Who are we? That you should have chosen us. You could have designed it within your divine purpose, God, for us to come earlier or to come later. But God, you said, today is our time. And God, we hear your voice calling again, saying, get up, wake up. Go and tell somebody about what I told you. God, lead your people back to the place where you can fill them up yet again, God. It's our time for God. We can't go with empty stomachs. So, Lord, fill us up. Fill us the whole before. And we'll be careful, God. We'll be careful 
to not only give your name the praise for, but to receive the marching orders, God, to go and tell somebody about a Jesus who can save anybody All right. and can save everybody. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, bless our church family. Bless us even now, God. I ask right now, Lord, that you'll reshift some time, re reshift some habits, God. And Lord, I rebuke the enemy. He's going to bring all kinds of distractions, all kinds of reasons why we don't need to come, why we don't need to be here, why we don't need to change and do anything different. But right now, I rebuke him in the name of Jesus for the blessing of your people, God. Oh, yeah. The blessing of your people. Do this for us. Do it even now, God, so that we can see you soon. Is our prayer today. We pray. In the name of Jesus, we ask these things. Let all of God's people say amen. 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 And amen. I know amen. this wasn't comfortable. I know it wasn't my traditional type of sermon. But in here today, I hope you heard something that says amen. we need to do better. Amen. We need to do more because the end is coming and we all need to be ready. Amen. amen. And amen. God bless you, my family. Amen. God bless you.